Nigeria. We're going to start off the conversation today talking about the ease of doing business here in Nigeria and uh, or the lack of it, like many people like to say. I have here with me Charles Odi, who's going to help us dissect that. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, let's start off with that. Is it easy to do business in Nigeria? It's a very simple question. Um, what you say? Yes and no. <laughs> okay. So just not to sound like a politician. Um, Doing business in Nigeria is very cumbersome yes. for a lot of small business owners. Um, apart from the fact that these small business owners have become their own government, they are providing their own power, um, fixing the roads to their offices and um, access to markets. Um, it's just so sad that right now, while we're talking about ease of doing business, we cannot pinpoint some um, favorable policies for these small business owners as to entry into the business and actually scaling. So, number one is capital. Capital is scarce, and then when you access capital, it's expensive in terms of interest rate. Number two is government policies. Someone asked me one time um, in one of our publications, which is one of our um, new books that we used in um, putting out and educating small businesses, um, what exactly is the most important thing to doing business in Nigeria? And I said government policies, right? Government can make or break you in, in Nigeria. Yeah. Um, and if, you, if you're not very careful, um, you see that a lot of people who are coming to Nigeria to do business are actually even looking for government stakeholder engage, engagement managers. So people who are, so for instance, if you're doing anything in government, they can come tomorrow and then just bring up one role, frustrate you. Next thing, you're out of business. Yeah. I'll give you a recent example on the guys um, who are in the logistics business. I was just talking about yeah. COVID-19. And then you see that um, a couple of, a lot of the, the backbone of, of the retail industry is um, actually delivery, logistics. And then you see that all the small, all the small um, businesses that are entering into that market are actually even getting frustrated. One minute you are in business, the next minute you are out yeah. in terms of regulations. And then, you know, that is just a very worrisome space to be in as a small business owner. Yeah. I think you mentioned a lot, of small, a lot about small business there, and I think that's what, I mean, they will tell you that no country in the world can literally function without manufacturing on one hand, and small businesses running, you know, the middle class economy. Um, Overregulation has always been a problem, but there's also a lot of people who complain about overtaxation. There's so many f f licenses and fees and taxes that come up. How do businesses cope with this, and how do you convince someone like you said, who wants to start a business in Nigeria to even bother when all of these kind of things are happening? I preach to them, I say, sorrow, tears, and blood. You just, <laughs> just have to get, get into it. So I'll give you an instance now. There's a, there's a restaurant who, we, we, I run a social enterprise where we have over 100,000 small businesses in our community. And there's this lady who is in the restaurant business. Now, Ebuka, this lady pays taxes um, to the federal government, pays taxes to the state government in terms of pay. This lady pays for the signage. She pays taxes for the signage in front of our store. She pays taxes for the water that passes from the kitchen into the drainage system. She, then very recently, some guys just entered the restaurant and, and they, they were counting and they're like, two TVs, two this and this. You have to pay radio and TV license. Yeah. And she's like, what is this? What, what exactly is this? So, so for you, if you're if you're new to this terrain, it's, you just want to close shop and go back to somewhere that's steady for you. Yeah. Um, but for for what we've been trying to do is actually engage with the government because I say to the small business owners, you cannot start to shy away from these conversations with the government. The government can break you. The government can make you. So you have to actually come out and be counted and sit with this government to actually come together to formulate policies that regulate your industry. Yeah. So if the government doesn't understand this industry and you are staying away from the government, then you will make policies that don't favor you. Yeah. So you have to come in, be counted, let your voice count, and then now start to engage them. So we came up with something called the Lagos Small Business Summit, and where we bring together government, academia, private sector, and these small business owners, you know, to foster conversations around doing business in Lagos. And it's a surprise you to know that, you know, before now, um, the tax men used to be, um, they used to come and, you know, discombobulate the whole environment of doing business. But right now, you know, they, they first serve you a, a letter to say, okay, come, let us see, let us talk, you know. So they're and a more civil now. That's more civil. So they look like, they act like okay. they're your partners. Uh, speaking of government, we're joined by Ayoko Nojini, um, who's a project manager for Enabling Business Environment Secretariat here in Nigeria. Ayoko, how are you doing today? Can you hear me, Ayoko?
Hi, uh, Bukem. Um, yes. Good to see you again. Good to see you again as well. Um, you've heard a lot of what uh, Charles here has said, and I think um, one of the biggest complaints I hear about are some of the things he's mentioned, over regulation, the lack of stability of you know, policy direction by governments, and these are things that will stifle any small business. I mean, we're even hearing big businesses closing down. We heard about ShopRite uh, just this week. You know, if businesses like that are being choked out by, I mean, perceived to be choked out from a market like this, how do small businesses survive? So what is the enabling business environment doing, you know, for more stability in policy making, first of all. Thank you, Bukha. I, I think that the real story is that um, this is a journey and um, the full steps have begun. We still have a lot to cover, and that's essentially what Charles has been saying. Uh, our role essentially is to make sure that every day, we take one step right to the destination that all experience essentially wants to get to. That's what we've begun to do in the last three years. Uh, it's been a check history, but we are that um, we are making progress on the aggregate. And uh, specific issues um, about SMEs. SMEs have the Nigeria is a federal, federal uh, state. We operate federalism. Mix it in such a way that the is not entirely so for the tax return. Uh, so um, states, local governments, but according to the constitution, have the rights to levy taxes. What we at the federal government is doing is to do the joint tax box, so that there's some financial tax. And I'm that the finance of 2020 introduces some provisions that are easy for um, um, right, sir, right, Ayakun, we, might, we might have to come back to you because your 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 sound is really faulty there. We're we're gonna just we're gonna come back to you just to make sure that your audio is properly um, fixed there. But Charles, let's continue before we go back to him. Um, I want to talk numbers now because the, the, we keep hearing about oh Nigeria is a huge. Uh, huge markets. Nigeria is a huge place to start business in. 200 million people. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter how thin the middle class is, there's enough people to make uh, businesses thrive here. But we hear about a lot of these businesses closing down or moving to other countries or not surviving long enough in Nigeria. It makes you wonder, is that a myth? Is it, do we really have a sizable market here in Nigeria for businesses to thrive? Um, we, we, we do have a sizable um, number of um, um, pot potential customers for the small businesses. But then it boils down to two things, right? The, the, the small business owner it's itself and then the environment in which the small business owner is, is, is playing. And we're just talking about ShopRite, you know, and then we had two stories. ShopRite is leaving Nigeria. Um, we had another story, you know, ShopRite is just selling some stakes so that they can get Nigerian um, regulators, you know, stakeholders yeah. that can help to mitigate against things. Um, we, we had the story about MTN, you know, so that the world was just watching the Nigerian terrain. So if you want to get foreign direct investment into the country, what is happening to the guys who are currently in the country? Yeah. You're strangulating some of them, they're packing shop and they're closing up. Then how do you expect me to bring money into your economy when it's looking like things are not stable? You know, so, I mean, if, if, if one, uh, we, we saw what happened with the Gokada and the Max and, and, and the other guys, just one policy, the government can break everything that you've tried to structure. You would not want to put a lot of money there. It's like testing the water with two feet. You know, you want to see if it's stable and see what you can get out of it quickly before it crumbles. Um, but if the government can actually now start to be um, my, your partner as a small business owner, I, I, I'd say to, I was in a, our last conference, I would say a, in, an unprofitable business cannot pay taxes, no matter how you flog the business. But if you partner with me to make sure that I am profitable, to make sure that you know there's capital for me to thrive, and then when I'm not thriving, you're not trying to um, run me out of business. So that's what I'm asking. The people who, I mean, the argument is always, well, you guys are making enough money anyway as businesses because Nigeria has a market for it. So you can, you can never necessarily pay too much tax back to government. So are you saying the market is not that healthy? or not that buoyant, or buoyant enough for the returns to be made? I think? mean, so it depends on um, what it is what it is you're selling. But I know that by the day, the purchasing power of the average man is reducing. So if you're selling luxury products, um, we're seeing in the news, luxury organizations shutting down and, and tourism, you know, on, on hold, 
hospitality, the government is trying to see what they can do. You know, all of those things are uncertain. But in terms of the fast-moving consumer goods, um, the what, what are the, the sausage rolls that you yeah. sell on the road? You those know, those things, are, those things are moving, and they're moving in, in numbers. So if you look at those books, and then you can't really even tell if someone is making money until you see the books. Right? It might look like, oh, they're declaring a lot of profit. But at the end of the day, you just look at the cost of doing business, providing power, providing infrastructure, paying your people, then your, your, your own government. All of that thing is reducing the cost of um, doing business and running a business in Nigeria. Okay, let's